I've owned this watch for almost 18 years. This is the first time in almost two years I've actually held it in my hand. I think one of the reasons is, is, that, is the cost of watches, especially the Swiss high-end watches, are becoming so expensive. This one now, if I was to buy again, is almost 11,000 pounds. I believe it's 10,995 pounds, which is a lot of money. Watches now are becoming very expensive. And the other thing that puts me off from wearing watches like this, or even this one, is just last weekend, we had the European Cup final. A Formula One racing driver uh, was attending and he actually got mugged for his uh, watch. It kind of makes me think, do I really want to wear a £11,000 watch? Nowadays, uh, people are getting mugged all the time for their expensive watch. My watch collection has kind of changed the watches that I've been buying uh, and wearing. Uh, and I started to buy more kind of affordable watches, uh, watches like this one. Now, affordable is kind of a relative term. Uh, this is uh, $295, which is about, about £180. So it is a kind of uh, relative to what you, what you can spend. Uh, a lot of people would say 180 pounds for a watch is still very expensive. So I, I bought this because one, I really like the look of it. Um, I've had a couple of watches from this brand and I really like their watches. Um, I've, I've got a diver, I've got kind of a dress watch. Uh, if people have seen my other videos, they'll know that this watch is basically a uh, Seagull 1963. Uh, what they've done is they've taken the case of the 1963 and they've slotted in their own dial. And uh, there you go, it's all done. And I really like the 1963. So for me, this is kind of a no brainer not to buy for, for that kind of money as well. So let me tell you a little bit about the watch. It is 38 millimeters uh, in diameter. It's 47 millimeters from lug to lug, and it's 15 millimeters thick. So it runs the uh, Siegel ST29 uh, in here. So it's a manual wound movement. Uh, and it's a very reliable movement as well. I've not had any problems with it. I didn't have it in this one or even my Siegel 1963, which I've owned for, I think almost four years. I really like it. Every morning you have to wind it, which I kind of like. I like the, the the morning routine of winding the watch every morning. Uh, there are some things that I don't like about this watch. Uh, and one of the things is the hands. Now, if you look at the hands, they don't reach right to the top. If you look on the constant second hand, it doesn't reach the top. It's literally, what, 60% of the way there. The chronograph uh, counter, again, you have the same thing. Uh, it doesn't reach right round to the top. Also the constant second hand when you run the chronograph, it doesn't reach right to the edge, it just off the tip of the, the, the markers. I don't understand why they didn't make it a little bit bigger. It would have been much nicer. That's one thing that I don't like about it. I think that's just about everything that I don't like about this watch, which is quite unusual. I normally have like a, a list of things that I don't like about it. It has a, an acrylic glass, which is gonna scratch like anything, but to me, I don't mind it being scratched. It kind of gives the watch a little bit more of character to it. Uh, so I don't mind acrylic glass, uh, whether or not it gets scratched or not. One of the other things um, I guess I don't like about it is the lug size. Now the lugs are so long. It's exactly the same as the 1963. I would have liked them to sort of cut it down. I did say that in my other video as well when I did the review of the 63. Uh, to make uh, the lugs a little bit smaller. Now I don't understand why they've probably done that is because it, it gives the watch a, a bigger feel on the wrist with longer lugs. Uh, if you have shorter lugs, the watch feels smaller. Um, if anyone's got a Seiko Turtle, they'll know that the watch is 44 millimeters, but it actually feels a lot smaller because it has very short lugs. They could have done it, but if they'd done smaller lugs, they would have had to completely redo the watch case uh so it would have cost them a lot of money it would have cost thousands of dollars more to just literally if they were to take just a millimeter off there or even half a millimeter off they would have to do a completely new mold for the case so i understand they wanted to just literally slot their their uh, dial in there and and leave it at that the case is fully brushed as well i like that this the the other watch that i've got is polished I think the brush is a lot nicer. It um, it kind of gives it the watch the, the whole military f uh, feel to it. Now, if anyone knows the IWC Fleber, it had similar hands to this. I had a 3706 Fleber, which basically had the same hands as this, with the sort of cut off hour uh, hand, and it's got the uh, the broad arrow at the bottom there. So it does give the watch a whole military kind of feel to it. 
Now, if you were to buy this with, say, a another brand name, um, well-known brand name like Longines or um, Hamilton or something else like that, you'd probably be talking three, four times the price. Um, this now, this is called the Big Eye. Now, the Longines does have a watch called the Big Eye, which is basically similar to this one, but it's a bit bigger. And I think that one retails for about. £1,700, it's like £1,695. So you're talking over $2,000 uh, for the long jeans, which I think just runs an ETA movement anyway, which is again, probably a couple of hundred pounds worth of movement. So you are just paying for the name. Uh, so I think if you're looking for a good, affordable chronograph, this is ideal. I really do like this watch. Ever since I got it, it's been on my wrist all the time. I haven't sort of most of the watches like the IWC uh, Portuguese that I showed earlier. Um, I was very delicate with it. Whenever I was doing something which I felt might damage it, I was constantly going, okay, take it off, don't wear it here, don't wear it there. But this one, I've been wearing it all the time. It hasn't bothered me. And in terms of, if you look at it, it hasn't really been scratched that much. I've owned it for about three weeks now. Now I got it on the, the stainless steel bracelet. Uh, instead of the strap. Uh, it, now the, the bracelet is quite nice. Um, I was surprised by it. It's got a solid uh, steel bracelet instead of it being stamped. It's, so it's uh, solid steel there. It's got a double clasp, so it keeps it nice and secure. It does have just pins though. That's the downside to it. When I first saw it, I thought, oh, that's screws, but no. Uh, it looks like it screws from there, but it's actually pins. But then a 180 pound watch, you can't, I can't really complain that it's um, it's got pins in there. If it was a couple of hundred pounds more, then I would be uh, complaining about that. Now, the other reason I didn't get it on a, a strap, you can come buy this on a strap, was I don't have that many 18 millimeter straps. This is 18 millimeter lug size. Uh, and also when you do put a strap in it, there's a massive gap there, which I don't like at all. So this fits really well. It kind of gives the whole watch a better look and feel to it. Um, this would probably fit my um, Seagull 1963, but the, the Seagull that I've got is all polished. So having a polished uh, case with brushed, uh, with a brush uh, bracelet, I don't think would suit the watch at all. But uh, I think if you're looking for a mechanical movement chronograph, uh, this is ideal. I'd rec recommend this watch to anyone uh, looking to buy it, even if you just wanted a cheap chronograph. Now it is only 30 meters water resistant, but um, so you can't really take it into water. I wouldn't take it into water. I'd be a bit uh, dubious about taking it because it's no screw down crown, it's a chronograph. Uh, the back of the watch is got a stainless steel case. Now. Normally, I always go on a rant about having see-through back, uh, and whenever a watch company puts a see-through back, I always go on a bit of a rant about having a see-through back. This has really nice movement to look at, so I'm surprised they didn't give the option to have a see-through back to it. I think this is the only one time where I've complained that uh, a back case should have a see-through back. Yeah, really enjoy wearing this watch. Um, I don't have to worry about being mugged um, when I'm out on the streets, walking around or anywhere else. So yeah, I like this watch a lot and um, it's gonna get a lot of uh, wrist time.